Recently, I was just looking at some of the, you know, past moments of the NBA, and... What? I was a little bored and had nothing else to do. Don't judge me. But the NBA 10 years ago was insane. It's just honestly so crazy to think about how things changed so fast. Like, just look at Yanis as a rookie. It got so much bigger over the years. Bruh. Oh yeah, he also got a lot bigger than he once was when he was just a baby Greek freak. Looking back though at some of the past highlights, it got me thinking, what is the best decade of NBA basketball? You have so many eras that brought different things to the table. Like you have the time, you know, when teachers got off work and played against the mailman and they considered that professional basketball. Seriously though, I don't think any players today would ever stand a chance in that era. Just look at the court. Dribbling is straight up RNG. Oh, you really think I missed that? Nah, my boy. I see that ref dripped out in his finest linens. My boy got his suit freshly tailored just to eject someone because you can't dunk on the peach baskets. Come on, Theodore. You should know this by now. You also have the 70s. And also, give your boy some props, all right? I finally accomplished the impossible, the unthinkable, the unimaginable. Did I finally beat Rod Wave in an eating contest? No, but I did something pretty close. I was able to find some colorized footage of a basketball game from the 70s. This puts into context just how impressive Wilt's 100 points against janitors and milkmen was. My boy DPOY. And you want to talk about load management? That word didn't even exist back in the day. They didn't even know something like that could even exist or if that sort of thing was even possible. As a matter of fact, they had the exact opposite where these guys unloaded their loads. Like bro, Wilt would put up 70 points and then turn around the same night and F 140 women in the same night. <laughs> Wild times. <laughs> and to be honest, I kind of like this era. No, not because of Wilt unloading his kids, but because about damn time there's people on the court I can relate to. I'm also a put I mean a towel boy. And let's not even forget about the 80s. It's so insane to think about how different players were in this era compared to today's players. Players are so soft and nice today, they make Mother Teresa look like Al Capone. You have players like the load management bros who will literally sit out because of a hurt pinky toe. Back in the 80s, these motherfuckers would play with a broken leg. No, 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 my bad. Actually, players in the 80s would play even if they had AIDS. Oh, I'm positive about that too. And the 80s regularly had players hitting each other with the Chris Breezy combo. I woke up Chris Breezy. Just because he breathed the same air or something. Like, bro, with all this going down, you really think LeBron is surviving a hard foul against Paul McKeskey? LeBron wouldn't even think about driving to the rim if the Polish plumber was anywhere in the city. And then we have the 90s. Fun fact, by the way. And now... Fun facts with Squidward. The only time a team had 70 wins was when there was also an African-American president in office. Obviously, when the Warriors won 73 games, Obama was the president. And when the Bulls won 72 games, who was the African-American president then? Yeah, so the 90s definitely had their fair share of dynasties as well. Also, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this as well. Probably not because y'all ain't weird like that. But when you read the comment sections of basketball games from the 80s or the 90s, they are literally a gold mine. <laughs> like one time I was watching the finals highlights of like Magic Johnson from the 80s. Again, don't even ask why. But the entire comment section was full of LeBron slander and some of like the other current players. I mean, they're probably just mad because of a light skin with green eyes, soft lips, and perfect skin would own everyone back then. Okay, I gotta chill because we still got the rest of the video to go. Can't have y'all finishing just yet. Also, in the comment section, you had stuff where everyone was just arguing about how tougher it was back then and how someone like KD, the most athletic Capri Sun straw, would get pushed around in the 90s by guys like Rodman and whatnot. While that might be true, in reality, we all know KD probably just end up joining them. And we also have the 2000s. Okay, so this is where things get a little interesting. If we actually step back and think about what they were doing in this era and what the heck was going on it seems so goddamn crazy that they did things the way they did back then and to think it happened just a few years ago you literally watch a player put half his foot over the three-point line and shoot a contested two for absolutely no goddamn reason like bro just think about that happening today oh you want to talk about how fast time changes you know how people go crazy over john Morant and his extracurricular activities Javaris Crittenton got a 23-year prison sentence for unaliving someone. Like it's his fault the other guy's head ran into the bullet. All these eras had their hour of glory. <laughs> My dad says that. You had your hour of glory all the time.
Never heard that in my life. Personally though, I gotta go with the era where teams were making the Harlem Shake videos. AKA the 2010s. I mean, for reals though, what do you guys want to start off with? Let's just take a look at all the legends that played during this era. You obviously have the current stars like Braun, KD, Curry, Harden, Rose, and whatnot. But you also have the legends like Kobe, Wade, Dirk, Tim, Scalabrini. Did I really just try to sneak in Scalabrini? <laughs> nah, if you know, you know. Scal is the motherfucking GOAT. There's no sneaking him in. He deserves to be on the GOAT list. And if you disagree, you're just a hater. That's so much heat though, not a single miss, honestly. Also, back in my day, <laughs> that's so funny to think that I'm finally able to say that back in my day. <laughs> but it was just so fun to witness these matchups because you know what was gonna go down the next day at the lunch table. The lunch table wasn't just a lunch table, you know. It's where some of the best memories happen. Your first kiss with your homie, Yes, I know, I know. Not trying to flex or anything, but I already had my first kiss. The lunch table was also where you had all your roast sessions, but what the lunch table also had was the times when it would turn into first take like Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless, where you just debate your homies about the stuff going on in the NBA. I ain't gonna lie though, it definitely got heated too many times. And also thinking back, we used the lunch table for everything but eating on it. And maybe it's because of all that. All those memories are what made it the best era for me. The nostalgia. Put that quote in your bio, Susan. <laughs> now, the legends who played aren't the only reason why this is the best era though. No, not at all. Cause the decade literally started off with a script full of drama and storylines you'd see somewhere like in Gossip Girl. Not that I, I know if that show even has that or even seen that show or anything. But you go starting off the decade with the 2010 finals that goes to a game seven with Kobe and the Lakers winning it all and getting their hour of glory. And thinking back, it's so crazy to think about how people really thought that if Kendrick Perkins played in game seven, it was a guaranteed victory for the Celtics. Kendrick Perkins guaranteed a victory. Holy smokes, I have no, absolutely no clue why some people are given the freedom to just talk about sports. Oh yeah, and then right after that year, in 2011, LeBron, just like how in Gossip Girl, oh, never mind, made his decision to leave Cleveland, all while a young 13-year-old Donovan Mitchell was sitting in the crowd. I have no idea why I'm telling you that. I don't think a lot of y'all understand how things change so fast though. Because if something like that were to happen today, Woj would have spoiled that thing like an hour before it happened. Oh yeah, and then the year after all that, in 2012, we had the lockout. I don't know if anyone's keeping track, but that's barely just three seasons of the entire 2010 decade. And look at all the stuff that's going on. But the lockout had some of the greatest collab crossovers in history. Even better than, you know, when McDonald's and Travis Scott teamed up or when Heisenberg teamed up with the Simpsons. Oh wait, my bad. That's just the homie Ned Flanders. During the lockout, we had LeBron play KD in football. As you can probably tell, I wasn't the most popular guy in school. Oh, really? Got bullied a lot. So what I do is, you know, go in the library to try to riz up some of the girls. Okay, okay, that's not what I actually ended up doing. I was just going to the library to hide from my bullies. And what I'd actually end up doing is watching all the highlights of NBA players, you know, playing street ball during the lockout. I even remember Kobe hitting a game winner over James Harden in a Drew Lee game. And legend has it, since that day, James Harden never played defense again. But man, that was such an awesome time. Ball his life probably made millions of millions of dollars during that time. If you had to make a pick, and you can only choose one. In your opinion, what was the best season of all time? For me, I gotta go with Breaking Bad season four. Nah, but for reals, it was the 2016 NBA season. And I truly think you can't even argue against that, no matter what era you watched. There are literally so many different iconic moments that happened during one season that I can't even list them all because the video would never end. It had one of the best dunk contests in history. Remember the cowgirl dunk Aaron Gordon did? He was practically sitting and riding on it midair. And then he still found a way to finish it. That dunk contest raised the bar so high, every dunk contest after it seemed so bad because of how iconic that one was. It took someone like Kyle Rittenhouse to participate to even make the dunk contest somewhat fun. Also, let me just explain something really quick. If it wasn't obvious enough already, I'm a huge fan of Kobe, like obsessed almost, to the point where it might have been worrisome to my family. 
Okay, not might. It was worrisome for them. But I was a huge fan of the guy. Had dreams about him. I just remember watching him play. So when he had his farewell tour in 2016, it was obviously a big deal to me. And the way he finished by dropping 60? Come on now, you know that's iconic and just adds to 2016 being the best season ever. You know moments like that are what made Kobe Kobe. Now you have like weird fake wannabe versions, but it's just not the same. It truly feels like 2016 was just peak life and everything fell off after that. 2016 may have even had the best finals of all time, where if Curry and the Warriors didn't choke, Andre Iguodala would have been in the GOAT conversation. I remember watching this game at a friend's house and trying to keep my composure after the Cavs won. As soon as I left his home, I remember just bursting out in tears and crying. Not because of the Cavs winning, nah bruh, cause Andre Iguodala lost another ring. Speaking of the greatest finals of all time, you can make a case that most of the best ones, if not all of them, came from this decade. Obviously the Warriors vs Cavs in 2016, the 2010 Lakers vs Celtics game 7, or the Spurs vs Heat where Ray Allen had the iconic 3 pointer. Bro, remember Ray Allen? That boy had such a beautiful stroke, one of the best ever. And then after 2016, KD decided to just battle snap the NBA for two years. Another peak moment in all of the NBA that just happened to be during the 2010s was social media. Hold on, hold on. Before you start disagreeing and saying no, hear me out on this. Social media for NBA players was right at the peak at this time, right on the tip before it fell off, at least for us fans because we get to laugh at their expense. I dug deep and found some old tweets from NBA players from back in the day. What? I had a lot of free time in the library, remember? But this is a time when they used Twitter recklessly and said whatever was on their mind. For example, Mo Spates was actually dropping some banger money-saving tips on the timeline. He once tweeted, if you can't afford corn, just turn on women's tennis and shut your eyes. <laughs> Speaking of tips, Bruh. the boy Ray Allen was on the bird app showing us how he got the most beautiful stroke. You know damn well that there's no way any of them would even be allowed to do this on Twitter today. Kyrie can't even tweet about the new show he's watching on Amazon without getting cancelled. I'm just saying, 2010's NBA had a lot of stuff going in their favor in being the best decade of all time. Well, time to head on out of here because the Elvis has left the building. <laughs> That's another weird phrase my dad used at. Anyways, bye y'all.